Hello, welcome to the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy, as we are exploring the Word of God here on the Patterns of God podcast. Make sure to stay tuned because today we are covering what the Word says about the church being the bride of Christ, but also when it comes to Christian marriages and relationships so that we can have more enriching relationships when it comes between our interactions between husband and wife. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Turn on your bell notifications and come back next week because we have all new episodes at theblessingreport.com. And yeah, every Wednesday and Sunday. (laughs) Let's get right into the material. But today we are exploring the church being the bride of Christ and also how Christian marriage is modeled through Jesus Christ. And so we're going to be exploring Romans 8 and we're going to be exploring Ephesians 5 when it talks about Jesus being the husband, we are the bride of Christ, and also the bride of Christ being the church in his body. Ephesians 5, starting with verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present itself unto himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or anything but that it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that love his wife love himself for he, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a great, a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And so, I'm actually going to go straight into um, Romans 8, talking about the transfiguration and the glory of God. Because at the end of the day, this is all about Jesus, um, the scripture being the word of God. And remember John 14 and six, Jesus the way, the truth and life. No one comes to the father, but by him. And so everything comes through Jesus being the gate, the door by which we know our heavenly father. So we have to see how he manifests himself in his glory and his second coming. So we have Romans eight. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth in travail and pain together until now. 
and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of our body for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what man seeth why doeth he yet hope for but if he hope that we see not then we but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us um, with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that or knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god and we know that all things work together um, together for the good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he had, he did predestinate them also he called, in whom he called them he also justified, in whom he justified them he also glorified. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we're just going to cover um, twofold what this looks like for the bride of Christ and what this looks like for husbands and wives loving one another. So we're going to start with um, Romans 8 talking about the glory of God being revealed in us. In the Bible, we're called earthen vessels, also vessels of clay, vessels of honor. And so if you can see yourself with in short spiritual eyes as vessels of God and this comes from Romans 12 um, that we are housing um, the Holy Spirit and as we are housing him again we are clothed in um, mortal bodies and um, vessels of clay because God made us from the dirt but if you can know that when you are reborn when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit you are baptized with the Spirit of God um, his glory is in short encased in your flesh encased in your mortal body and it talks about all creation wasting anticipation for the manifestations of god um, to come forth and so what that means is that we in short because of the fall of man and the first adam sin we are holding vessels for the glory of god for the presence of god and for in short the presence and power and spirit of God to open up in us it must be revealed so again that is revealed in substance um, faith is the evidence of things hoped for the su is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and so how does this apply to our marriages how does this apply to the bride of Christ it says that hey we're going to wash our wives in the word we're going to wash the body of Christ in the word and so with that washing Jesus is the living water if um, his word is again the living water and his word is a two-edged sword able to separate bone from marrow able to separate the heart of man from his intentions then um, this is the great separation that we see um, with love with the spirit that if we are not seeing the glory in our wives anymore if we are not seeing the glory of god in his bride anymore that water first cleanses us from the scales that are on our own life our own eyes and in our own lives because um ephesians not ephesians philippians talks about um set your sight on things that are high and above and not beneath if it, anything be praiseworthy, if anything is pure, if anything uh, has virtue, if anything is of a good report, give praise unto God. So when we're in marriages that we've been um, married a long time, or if we have been churches um, in attendance there for some time, we will begin to become disheartened and disillusioned. <laughs> but right there, it says, 
all of creation is waiting for the manifestations of the Son of God. So as followers of Jesus Christ, as disciples, as believers, as sons of God, we are made to have that glory be revealed in all creation. And so this has to be our prayer that the Lord gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. So if we are not enjoying our wives, if we are not enjoying our husbands, if we are not enjoying our church, then there is something in us that is not being washed in the word. And this just comes through fellowship and communion that, hey, it is the finished work of Christ Jesus that is doing the washing. And we see this in um, Romans 8, where it says like, hey, all those that he has predestined, he has conformed them in the image of God. So the church, when we think it's acting up, it acting crazy, the um, wives that we have, uh, when we think they are not um, submitting in the way that they should, everything conforms to Jesus. And everything is done by the finished work of Christ Jesus on the cross. That's his death, his burial, and resurrection. His promises are yes and amen. So if everything yields, submits, and conforms um, to Jesus' lordship, this is the same way that our marriages conform. This is the same way that our churches conform. Anything that is out of order, again, it says he has predestined, and those that he has predestined, he has called, and those he has called, he has justified, um, that they are, in short, sons of God. And so again, not everybody uh, <laughs> in the church is a son of God, but the ones who are, are. <laughs> and uh, we just have to thank the Lord for his process. Thank the Lord for his patterns. Thank the Lord um, that his promises again are yes and amen. Any petition, any declaration, any prayer has to yield fruit. And so when we are um, taking that scripture from Ephesians 5 to wash our wives in the word of God, the living water, or we're washing the church being the bride of Christ in the living water, we have to make sure that we're not beating them with the word because again, it is the finished work of Christ Jesus, um, that his blood is enough, it is sufficient. And so, if we are trying to reveal the glory in our wives, if we're trying to reveal the glory in the bride of Christ in the church, it may be on us again as sons of God to provide the revelation, not strictly in intellect, but the glory to, uh, to be revealed in presence, in fellowship, and fullness. And so this is how we have fullness in our church by leading people in the presence of God, being priests. Jesus is our high priest, but we are called to be prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, leading the sheep, leading the people, knowing that they will already conform to the spirit of God because God has called them. God has justified them and it's by his finished work. And so again, we are just stewards. We're just um, caregivers, but we don't do anything of ourselves. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's but by his spirit. And so as carriers of his spirits, everything that we do um, gets anything in creation in order because everything groans waiting for the manifestations for the sons of God. And so these are the greater works that the Lord talks about. These are the signs, miracles, and wonders. This is the stuff that follows those who believe. <laughs> and so we have to believe good for our church. We have to believe good for our family. We have to believe good for our generation. And we have to believe good for our husbands and wives because he said, hey, it was never in the Lord's prayer um, plan or prayer um, that we would divorce, but Moses made an exception for the hardness of your heart. And it says like, hey, if you 
confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. And how this applies to our wives, our husbands, and the church is faith is instituted in the heart. And so if you don't have belief, if you don't have faith the side of a mustard seed, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to get anything to manifest, to get anything to conform, anything to have the revelation of God. And so we need to have fellowship in our families, in our marriages. We need to have prayer, Bible study. But all this is setting up a tabernacle, an altar, a place of fellowship, communion, worship, <laughs> praise unto the Lord. And so this is how we can see our wives differently. This is how we can love them uh, more preciously, more purely. This is how we can love the bride of Christ more preciously, more purely, more perfectly by having the manifestations first in our own hearts that the Lord will no longer uh, have us to have a heart of stone, um, but have a heart of clay and a heart of flesh. So that's uh, the promise um, we have for today. Uh, thank you for watching. And again, the Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly anything that we can pray or ask for. But the important thing is that we ask. <laughs> and so um, that's the beautiful message of Christ Jesus. Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, knock. Ask and it shall be given, knock and shall be open, seek and you shall find. And so, hey, and I just wanna end by um, just making a uh, petition uh, that, hey, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, um, and your church or your marriage is not going the way you want, um, just repeat after me, uh, Lord Jesus, I, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost, I repent of my sins, and I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus has come in the flesh, and God has raised him from the dead. And Holy Spirit, baptize me with your fire, uh, Holy Spirit come and I receive Father Lord Jesus thank you in Jesus name we pray amen hello thanks for watching the blessing report at theblessingreport.com and if you would like to partner with us as we continue to make good family friendly Christian content make sure to become a subscriber at theblessingreport.com where you can be a monthly or a weekly donator or you can make a one-time donation in the description box below or the link in our bio. And if you purchase from theblessingreport.com slash shop, a portion of your proceeds goes to help fund our productions when you buy from our Christian clothing. And if you'd like to partner with us as we move towards our feature-led film and our TV series, make sure to like, comment share and subscribe and turn on your bell notifications for we have new videos and podcasts every wednesday and sunday so come back next week thank you so much for your love and support make sure to check out a playlist subscribe and watch another video god bless